Hi everybody! Welcome to the second part of this tutorial where you are learning to use AutoCAD in 3D. Here we will learn how to use solid primitives, Boolean operations as union, subtract and intersect, and commands to add a third dimension to objects. Let's start! Let's draw basic 3D objects. I am going to use viewports in the model space. I choose this option, for right. In the main one, I will be drawing the objects with 3D perspective. The small windows will be orthographic views, top, left and right. Now I am going to introduce the solid primitives. These are basic 3D objects and they are located here in the Home tab. Despite they might not be very useful themselves alone, as most of our drawings won't be exactly those solids, I am going to draw some of them. It's very simple. I start with the box. I click on the icon. Choose a start point. Then I have to define the width at the length of the rectangle. For example, I type 100 for this dimension, then I insert a value for the other, again 100. So, it's going to be a square. Finally, I need the height. I am going to type 120. Now, pay attention how the solid is projected on the orthographic viewports. This time I'm going to draw a cylinder. The first part I draw it as a circle. Then I insert the height of the cylinder. The cone is the same process. Then I need the height, but this time I'm going down with the pointer and you can notice that the solid will be inverted. I type the value for the height and press enter. Now, I encourage you to look at the projection in this viewport. It seems strange. However, if I rotate the main viewport to the left side, you can understand this. The remaining solid primitives you can explore by yourself. For now, Let's continue to the next topic. Extrude and press pull objects. Basically, these two commands allow us to add a third dimension to 2D objects. With extrude, we can convert objects either to a surface or to a solid. That depends on its nature. If we extrude lines, open polylines or splines, we add a dimension on the z-axis, converting them to a surface, as you can see. By the way, if we do the same process to a closed boundary object, like the examples I show you here, I activate extrude, and by adding a z-dimension, they are automatically converted to a solid. Ah, and there is also an option to extrude only the boundary here. I type EXT to activate extrude again, and before selecting anything, it says here, select objects to extrude or mold. I type MO to choose mold, and the prompt asks me if I want to convert a close profile in a surface or a solid. I choose Surface, type the shortcut SU, press Enter, then I select the objects, add the height, and I can realize they convert to surfaces. I'm going to rotate the workspace so you can see this better. You see, it's a surface. If you don't like this visual style because of the grids, I can change it to this one. Command press pull. This tool has a similar use, 
but there are a few differences with extrude. First, it only works for closed boundaries. I'm going to activate the command and then, instead of clicking on the objects, I must click inside the area when it's highlighted. Second example. In this situation there are two intersected rectangles. If I use press pull here, I can extrude the close boundary where my pointer is. Then I can do the same at this side. Look how beautiful it is. Using the command extrude here, I convert to a solid the wall polyline that I select. If I have an object in script inside another, sometimes I have to wait a bit to highlight both objects. Now click, if I want to extrude just this area. 3D polyline. A 3D polyline can change the Z component. For example, I'm going to draw a normal 2D polyline. As you see, I'm drawing it in the XY plane and I can't see any polar tracking on the Z axis. Now, I will try the same with the 3D polyline. It's this icon here. I'm making few segments and if I try to move it vertically, it recognizes the Z axis. I click here and then just draw a couple of segments more. If I rotate the workspace, I can see the segment on the Z axis. Another characteristic of 3D polylines is that I can only draw straight line segments, unlike the function to draw an arc in a 2D polyline. Union. This operation is quite easy to understand. Basically, it consists in merging intersect solids in a single one. For example, here I have a box and I'm going to make a cylinder intersecting it on this face. I find the midpoint of this edge to place the center of the circle. Then the cylinder height is going to be coincident with the top edge. Now I click on the icon Union on the Solid Editing tab. Then I just select both objects and press Enter. As you see, this is now a unique solid. This works not only for two solids but also for several of them, like in this example. I select all and press enter. Here you can see the result. Subtract. In this operation, basically we remove part of a solid using another. Let's activate the command subtract. If we wait a few seconds, a label appears with instructions how to use the command. I find it quite clear. First, I select the object that I want to keep. Press Enter. Then, I click on the solid I want to subtract. The box here will disappear completely along with the intersected part between both objects. This tool can still be used for more than two solids. Here, I want to subtract these two boxes. I reactivate the command, select the wedge, press enter, then I select the boxes. For this case, I want to have an empty space where the boxes are. Here, I recommend to use union first for the wedges. Then, with subtract, I select first a big solid, press enter, then select the small ones, and be sure you click when they are highlighted. Intersect. With this boolean operation, we just keep the intersect part of two objects. Let's try it for this example. I click on the icon Intersect, select both solids and press Enter. As you can see, 
everything here was erased except the intersect section. I can also use this tool when the surface intersects a solid, like here. Now I can apply intersect here and check out the result. Ok, the original line is still here. To the objects don't work in intersect. Important considerations. The Boolean operations union and subtract are only effective for solids. If I want to merge solids with 2D objects, like a line, it will not work. The same if I try to merge a solid and a surface. On the other hand, the operation intersect, I can use a solid and a surface, as I ex explained before. Before proceeding to teach you the next commands, look to the workspace. You can see that I have changed the grid colors. I did it in order to be easier to see. Of course, as I have a yellow grid now, I will avoid to draw objects in the same color to not be confusing. Let's open the Options window. Type Options and press Enter. Here. Go to the Drafting tab and click on Colors. In this new window, you can change the colors of several drafting tools, including Grid Major and Minor Lines. Have in mind that the major lines should be lighter than the minor lines. Now, let's continue with more commands to draw solids from 2D objects. Loft With Loft, we can create a solid from cross sections. The simplest way to use loft is having two surfaces. Let's look at this example. I'm going to draw a circle here. Then, from the center I draw a line on the direction of the z-axis. Then, from the top endpoint I draw a circle on the xy plane. Now I am going to activate the command loft. If you don't find there, click in this arrow and should be one of this list. I select both surfaces. Press Enter. Then choose Select Cross Sections. And this is the result. For the second example, I'm going to draw another circle from the line midpoint. I activate Loft again, select the three surfaces and press Enter. The order of selection also determines how the solid is drawn. For the third example, let's do it differently. I select the circle at the bottom, then the top and finally the middle one. Of course, you have to imagine what you want to draw. If you try to draw a solid that is not physically possible, the program will adjust it for you, and the result may not be as you expected. Select a point. Apart from selecting surfaces, we can still select points. For example, here we choose the circles. Then, we want to love to this point. If we look to the command bar, the prompt says, select cross sections in lofting order or these options. I click on point or type PO. Finally, I can click on the point and select cross sections. Another way to use loft is through a path. This time I draw a rectangle on the XY axis. Next, I want to snap to the geometric center. I click on the arrow next to the object snap and check if that mode is on. Now I'm going to click on the UCS and change it to the center of the rectangle. By hovering the polyline, I can see it appearing. I place the UCS there. Then I rotate the UCS axis in order to have the plane XY perpendicular with the rectangle. In this way, for example. My next step is drawing a spline 
from the center of the rectangle. When I finish, I press Enter to place the object. Now I return the UCS to the word position. Then I draw a circle on the endpoint of the spline. So I'm going to use Loft again, select the rectangle and the circle, press Enter. Now in this list I click on Path. And finally, select the spline. We reach the end of the part 2 of this tutorial. So, it's everything in this lesson. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to CAD in Black to get easy access to the full list of tutorials. If you think these videos are not enough for you, I can provide online private lessons. Just send me an email and I can give you all the details. Thank you and hope to see you next time.